Hey there, savvy investors, and welcome back to the Dividend Uncle channel. In today's deep dive, we're peeling back the layers on Fraser's property's recent property sell-off frenzy, apparently to lower its gearing ratio from a high of 78%. From offloading Next Shopping Mall to Fraser's Centerpoint Trust, or FCT, to handing over German assets to Fraser's Logistics and Commercial Trust, or FLCT, and a fascinating twist with Fraser's Hospitality Trust, or FHT, declining a purchase offer. This episode unpacks two key questions. One, whether these moves are strategic wins or potential pitfalls for the REITs under Fraser's property's umbrella, and two, whether there are further acquisition opportunities from their parent and what's the impact on these Fraser's REITs. Spotlight on FCT, navigating the next waters. Diving into FCT's recent strategic move, the acquisition of an additional 24.5% stake in NEX from its parent, Fraser's property, is noteworthy, boosting FCT's stake to a significant 50%. This acquisition is not just a mere expansion but a calculated step that's anticipated to bump up the distribution per unit, or DPU, by a promising 1.5%. What's even more intriguing is the financial agility showcased by FCT. Following the divestment of Changi City Point and Hector Riot, FCT's gearing remarkably decreased from 39.3% to 37.8%, despite the acquisition. For those keen on the intricacies of the next acquisition, I've delved deeper into this in a previous video, which you can check out here for a comprehensive understanding. Looking forward, the horizon for potential acquisitions by FCT under Fraser's properties portfolio seems narrowed. Among properties like Centerpoint, Robertson Walk, and a 50% stake in North Point City South Wing on the Fraser Properties balance sheet, only the latter aligns with FCT's focus on suburban malls. Valued at about $1.1 billion, North Point City South Wing, doesn't present the same allure as Nex. My perspective on the possibility of North Point Wing acquisition leans towards caution. Acquiring it might spike FCT's gearing significantly amidst the current high-interest environment possibly over-leveraging without the same degree of return next promises. Expanding FLCT's portfolio through strategic acquisitions. FLCT recently marked its growth strategy with the acquisition of four German logistics properties from its parent, Fraser's property, at a valuation of $188.9 million. These properties, all fully occupied with three holding freehold status, underscore FLCT's commitment to enhancing its European logistics portfolio. The financing of this acquisition through $179 million in notes at a 3.83% interest rate has modestly adjusted FLCT's gearing ratio upwards to 32.5%, maintaining its financial health and readiness for further strategic expansions. This acquisition is indicative of FLCT's potential pathway for growth, with Fraser's property holding a substantial portfolio of logistics and commercial properties in Australia and Europe that could further diversify and strengthen FLCT. The REIT's relatively low gearing post-acquisition signals a robust capacity for future property acquisitions, especially if its parent continues down the path of divestments. Fraser's Hospitality Trust's Independent Stance FHT was presented with an opportunity to purchase Capri by Fraser at Changi City, an offering by its parent Fraser's property. Despite having the first right of refusal, FHT decided against this acquisition, stating it didn't align with its strategic objectives, though without further elaboration. I think this decision reflects FHT's prudent management and its commitment to strategic alignment rather than compulsory expansion. With a healthy gearing ratio of 34.5%, FHT possesses the financial flexibility for acquisitions but opts for caution, underlining the trust's autonomy and strategic discernment in its growth approach. Looking ahead, while Fraser's property holds other hospitality assets potentially available for sale, FHT's recent decision signals a new era of selective growth. This independent approach, if continues, ensures that any future acquisitions will likely meet stringent criteria for strategic fit and yield accretion. The Dividend Uncle's Take on Fraser's Properties Selling Spree As Fraser's properties deleverage and sell off its assets, the landscape for its REITs, FCT, FLCT, and FHT evolves, bringing both opportunities and critical decisions into focus. For FCT, its acquisition of a stake in NEX was a strategic move, boosting its DPU and lowering its gearing. The focus now should be on optimizing NEX and enhancing existing assets, 
rather than pursuing additional acquisitions, especially given the limited alignment of Fraser's properties remaining assets with FCT's suburban mall focus. Its gearing ratio is also the highest, presenting the most limited acquisition runway among the three REITs. For FLCT, its acquisition of the German logistics properties aligns with its expansion strategy, comfortably supported by a 32.5% gearing post-acquisition. With Fraser's properties' intent to offload more assets, FLCT stands on the brink of significant growth opportunities. However, this is also a moment fraught with potential pitfalls. Fraser's properties' divestment strategy may include assets of varying quality, prompting a necessity for the FLCT's management to independently assess each potential acquisition's merits. In addition, as shareholders, our active participation in scrutinizing these acquisitions is vital. We must assess proposed acquisitions independently and comprehensively. For FHT, as the hospitality investment sector blooms, there will be high investor demand for hospitality assets. As a result, FHT may encounter acquisition opportunities from the sponsor that are less attractive, less yield accretive. Management's independence of assessment and decision making will ensure that future addition, if any, will be beneficial and strategically coherent. However, similar to FLCT, the onus also lies on shareholders to scrutinize each potential acquisition, ensuring they are yield accretive and strategically aligned with the REIT's portfolio, and vote accordingly at EGMs or with our investment dollars. Rest assured, the dividend uncle will be right here to guide and help ensure our investments continue to grow wisely and sustainably. Conclusion As we navigate the landscape where a parent company divests properties to its REITs, it's crucial to remember that each transaction demands meticulous scrutiny. The financial headroom of each REIT for acquisitions, the growth potential and strategic fit of each asset, the independence of REIT management in evaluating the parent company's disposals, and our proactive assessments as shareholders, all play pivotal roles in determining the true value and strategic fit of these transactions. It's this nuanced approach that ensures we're not merely collecting assets, but are strategically enhancing our portfolios for long-term growth and stability. Thus, while the selling spree presents opportunities, it also demands our diligent oversight to ensure each acquisition truly benefits the REIT and its shareholders. Until next time, happy investing!